Thanks for coming to see me. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm Phil Whitaker. I, uh, I work for a, a small digital agency uh, in Manchester called Hi-Fi. And I wanted to show you around some, some of the uh, uh, plugin that we've, we've had in development for a, a very long time. We've been using it on lots of different projects. So uh, thanks for coming to see me talk about the plugin. Um, I know that Pete's on in the other room, and yeah, it's very popular. Um, so yeah, we've been working on this uh, for about about four years, and uh, it's been in the form that it's in at the minute uh, for about um, about a year, and it's been on Aaron Bracco for about uh, two months now. Uh, it's had over a thousand downloads so far, so it's uh, it's doing pretty well. So what is uh, positional content, which is the name of the talk? And first of all, I'd like to just define what it is. And um, it's an art direction tool for Umbraco, um, and it allows you to uh, position any contact anywhere over an image. Um, so it's about managing position content and the image across responsive breakpoints as well. So it enables you to, to control all of those, of those aspects of, 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 of it. So uh, we work really hard on the authoring experience and uh, we designed it to make it really accurate, as accurate as we can do. Um, so how do you build a, a positional content property editor? Well, it, it all starts with document types. Uh, so it's, it's very, very integrated into, uh, into Umbraco. And uh, then you wrap it in a, a nested content wrapper. Uh, thanks, Matt, for that one. Um, wouldn't be possible without uh, Positional content will be possible without nested content. Uh, and then you create a, 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 a positional content data type and you assign all the different different parts of it. So you can assign uh, content to uh, the items that you're positioning and to the uh, some settings uh, for styles and things like that. And you can assign it to the image underneath as well. So we can have, have content, content aside to the image and, and settings for the image as well. And then you can set up breakpoints on it, uh, and you define your crop um, settings for for the particular breakpoints, and you define what, uh, what uh, pixels that works from. So we work really, really hard on the data model behind this, and the data model really is just a Christmas tree. So it's it's there to hold, act as a as a holder for for all these content elements, all these nested content parts. And, and it has four parts to it. So we've got uh, the image underneath it, um, the breakpoints that holds the position and scale for each crop, um, then the items which hold the content or they hold the a reference to the nested content, uh, and then the dimensions that holds the positions of each of the items at each breakpoint. So it, we work really hard on this, trying to get this as refined as possible so it's really easy for people to, to pick it up and use it for whatever. Um, so this may go well, it may not go well, as usual with these things. Uh, so I want to show you, first of all, if I can get this working. Oops. Give me a second. So here's a instance of them. Okay. So what we want to do here is um, people don't really. Uh, I've not told many people about this, but um, my wife's from Japan, and uh, she lives in a little town uh, just outside of Nagoya called Moriyama. And for people that know Moriyama, the company. So when I first did my training. For, uh, from Braco with Mark from, from Moriyama. We had quite an interesting conversation about, about that. So I thought what I'd do with this is I would uh, use positional content to magically transport uh, Mark and Darren to, to Moriyama. So if I can see this, which is not great really. So as you can see here, this is a cropping tool. So it enables you to, to show to define what the image is that's output, and then I can maximize it uh, like that, and I can add, add content to it. So if I go into here and choose my content and choose an image, and find that, Oops. and then choose a picture of Darren, 
and he appears on there and I can increase it in size and place him somewhere and then I can do the same thing again and had Mark on there as well <laughs> and move him across to the side and increase him in size it's a bit big that and then if I go to save that and preview it and there you go so pretty simple really um, and that's about as simple as you get with positional content uh, but what I wanted to do is start to talk about doing that responsively so if we go back I've got some examples here So this is positional content within nested content. So uh, this is set up for for uh, a responsive banner. So this is a one that I set up earlier on. You see, the only difference between this and the other one is that I've, I've set up breakpoints to it, and the breakpoints allow me to change change what the content, what the position of the content is, and change the crop points of it as well. And then if we go further down, I can swap out the the image so this image is different from the one previous and I've overridden it it doesn't need to be overridden, uh, overridden by an image it can be overridden by whatever you want and uh, take it further down so I've replaced the overridden the background image with a, a darkened version of it and I've changed it I've played around with it so um, yeah, in terms of responsiveness, that's, that's really nice. And what I'd like to do now is talk about whether, how, um, how that, that works on the front end and why using this tool for responsive banners is a lot better than just doing it manually. So I'll go out to the... Okay. So what I've done is set up here a... I've just set this up so that... Uh, it, this is a, a straight copy, a, a straight uh, copy of the image. So this will do nothing. And if I scroll it down, it's not going to do anything. And you can see the text is horrible, and it gets really tiny. And when you go from a landscape to a portrait thing, it doesn't work. Um, so what people do is they create multiple images. If we can get to the right, yeah, okay. And this multiple image, they they change the image, but the problem with that is it's really, really difficult to to maintain that. And I've got instances of uh, visual content where we've got 16 on a page and managing 16 times four images, that's a lot to do. And the designers have to do it and the text doesn't look nice and it doesn't work with SEO and, and all those types of things. So it's, it's an absolute nightmare uh, to do. So the tool that I've got makes it a lot easier so I could go on to that one properly. You can see the text. You can see the text there. Yeah. That's a lot. And the text of the, uh, the typography works really well. It stays, stays the same size. So for a responsive banner this is a really really good tool and this is what's shown to everybody and this is what's been on the Twitter feeds and, and all this but one of the purposes of the talk today was to to show you the other things that we've been doing uh, with positional content uh, because it's not just a tool for responsive banners it's that's not what the plugin is called so um, first of all it, um, I've been uh, the team I've been working with uh, very very closely um, in a similar way to responsive banners, we've started to use it for responsive backgrounds as well now. So, the problem with uh, with cover, uh, and I love cover when it first came out, it's, it's brilliant to be able to cover that area in the background image, but the problem with it is it's very difficult to focus things and you can't choose at a break point when something appears and how it appears. So you just you're just not able to to art direct that particular instance, which makes it very difficult. So what we've done is, this is a piece of static content, it's not positional content at all, 
it's just sitting over the top of it. And that's a new image. So we've just swapped out the image all the way down. And as you can see, it looks a lot better and it gives a lot more fidelity for the designs down the, down the devices and down the breakpoints. Um, and in terms of the, the HTML underneath this, it's, it's very simple. It's just literally a, um, I can show you actually. Okay, if anybody can see that. It's just a picture element, is all it is. So the next thing from positional content, and this is where we began. Uh, this is where positional content came from. We had this job from this, this client who had a kilometer square mall in Kuwait, and they needed to put information on 700 units um, across multiple floor plans. And after about 20 minutes, half an hour of positioning them manually, I went, right, okay, I'm going to build something in a couple of hours to do this, to handle this for us. And that's where it, it, it came from, really. So, so this, is, this is one of the floor plans that we had. And it's as simple as that. And I've re retrograde fitted this, retrofitted this into additional content. And if I want to add a new one, it's somewhere. It's always away. No, nope, nope, don't want to do that. So yeah, adding a new hotspot is really easy to do. It's just literally the same thing uh, that we've been seeing all through the through the demo. Um, so then we started to think about how we could take this data and turn it into something else completely different. Um, so we, we, uh, a job that we, uh, we did for a company um, was developing lots of games for things, and they asked for uh, a Spot the Difference game. And we sat down and we realized that Spot the Difference, all it is really, is a positional hotspot that's hidden over the top of something, and um, that's all it is, with, with a hotspot, uh, with a, a click action on the hotspot and a click action on the on the background. Um, and so once we realized that, it became very easy. So, so what I've done is I've, I've created a unicorn to spot the difference here. And if I click on a section, the up, oh, splat, no, not hit it. Kapow, hit it there. And it's, it's really easy to set up. Get another one. Um, there's one final one down here. There was five of them on here, but I spent an hour trying to find the fifth one and couldn't. So, and there you go, you're all done. Um, so, if we go into the back, back office as well and have a look at this, very simple. It's just blank hotspots that sit over the top of it. And that's it. Um, so, finally, we took all of these ideas and uh, we've recently developed a uh, a site for uh, a company um, that deals with hotel phones and uh, templates within hotel phones. So click on this and I'll show you the demo of this. So what this, this does is uh, when you go to a, a hotel, there's a phone there and there's a, um, a piece of paper that sits on that, that phone that tells you where the concierge button is and where the uh, reception button is. And they're different for every single hotel, even amongst chains, there, there's no standardization of that. And this is a manual process that somebody, some people did where they phoned up and they said, what's on number one, what's on number two, what's on number three? And there was a nightmare of people trying to get it right. And it was backwards and forwards all the time. So what we decided to do was create a tool to be able to do that. Um, and this is a tool that we've generated. And what it allows them to do is pick a hotspot and put in the data. Now it's, it's purely representative because all you're looking to do is get that information to the designer so that they can design it for them. But it just takes all of that legwork out. And more importantly, all this information sits within a, a salesperson's head. And trying to get it out of them 
is a nightmare because I've tried. So giving them the tools to be able to build those templates for them, yeah, for, for themselves, and then being able to give that to the, their clients just has been a huge difference to them and, and how they work about it. So to show you the back office as well. And this is those creating, I'll let this, this go for a couple of minutes. And this is just creating a, uh, an RTE at the top, which you can go in and type in. So it's a little bit of an Angular app underneath the hood. It's a really cool, nice little tool um, to do this. And they've got uh, 50 phones with four templates per phone. So trying to do that manually would be a nightmare. Uh, and just having someone to be able to do it visually was, was really good and really, really nice. So, um, sorry. Okay, so um, I've shown you some very, very basic, very simple examples of, of positional content, how we're using it and, and how we're taking it uh, and using it in completely different ways than, than the ways that I've talked about originally. So all the responsive banners and all, all those sorts of things. So I'm, I'm interested in finding out from the community how people are going to start using this. So I've set up, uh, there's a hashtag that I want people to start using to tell me what sort of things they're using. Uh, for it, I'd be really interested to see because we've put a lot of work and a lot of effort into this to get it there, and it's really interesting to see how people um, are going to use it. Yeah. So finally, I wanted to to show you something. Uh, this is one of my clients, uh, Rudy Bianchi. They're a big furniture company, and we've got positional content. Been working in there for for about nine months now, and uh, they they've done this off their own back. This is no, no direction from me. And the amount of stuff that they're doing with this, and they've actually got a web admin person doing this, who sends them, the, the designer sends them the SVGs, and they go ahead and they build it. And it's really impressive, the stuff they're doing with it. So, yeah. So thank you very much. Um, and yeah, have you, anybody got any questions? I do. Yeah. What's the uh, Sorry. Hello. Oh, okay. Um, so, what do you store under the hood? Is it a big JSON representation? It is a big JSON representation. Okay. And so, I could render the different elements based on what I decide to do. Yeah. So, yes. how do you figure out? The image is in relation to, I don't know, 20 pixels from the bottom right hand corner. So, so it's all done via percentages. Okay. Uh, so what, that's what it stores, is the percentage from the edge. Okay. Um, and depending on uh, where it is as well, it'll do things like it'll allow you to, to grow from one edge. So it'll change the, uh, the position of, of that, so it'll say grow from the bottom. Uh, or grow from the right, um, and, and yeah, all that information. And when you bring it out as a, a model, you've got you've got all that information. So then it's up to me yes. how I implement it. Very, very nice. So we, I've set up, I've given a partial um, as part of the download that, that does a lot of that for you uh, and can help you, help you because it's a, it's a big thing to be able to do that. But then you have access to that model, and that model's really well defined, so you can do whatever you want with it. Very nice. I have a question, and I know the answer, but I'll ask it anyway. Yeah. Um, surely, having all of this presentational stuff and different breakpoints, yeah. the CSS and JavaScript behind this is going to be a mess. Yeah. So, thank you. You've reminded me of that one. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. So, yeah, underneath the hood of this, I can, uh, I can show you this. If I go, go to something complicated. Let's 
So underneath the hood, uh, not that one. Underneath the hood, this is incredibly clean. I'll see that for a yeah. Everybody see okay? So we have a picture element, uh, which contains all the information for the responsive images, and uh, positional content works out all the crops for you automatically as well. So it, uh, you don't have to do anything with that, uh, and it, it'll do all the zooms and all the, uh, all the resizing for you as well. Um, and then the, the items are defined in a tiered div. So uh, the number of breakpoints is the number of divs, and it just shows the divs that's, that's for the current breakpoint, and, and that's it. So there is, there is no JavaScript there. There is about 100 lines of CSS, and uh, yeah, the, the partial itself, I'll show you the partial. Partial itself is is that it's 80 lines of code, so it's really really clean, and you can pick it apart quite easily and work out how you want to implement it yourself. Uh, I had one question. Um, did you think or do you think about implementing something about animations for web? Because when I see this, I, I, I refer to the you know, banner editors in WordPress, for example, where you, where you can define how specific elements behave on front end. Yeah. Did you think about it? Um, well, that's down to you. Because within positional content, each, uh, each item and the image as well underneath it has two kind of hangers to it. One that relates to content and one that relates to settings. So in, in terms of underneath this, uh, the way that it's set up, I'll show you actually again. So the way that uh, the partial works is it, it works exactly the same as the grid. Um, so within the grid, you just have little nuggets of HTML, yeah, and you can control all of that and how what is rendered out, and you can pass that information down into uh, into the uh, into it. So, so yeah, absolutely no problems. It's completely whatever you want to do uh, in a very unbracket way, as Kevin said. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, 